all, my name is Jasmine Jones and I am a licensed clinical social worker in this little channel I like to call uh, Black Girl Therapist in, in the Wild. And this is a little show I like to call, there you go, I mixed it up, um, Therapist Sips and Reviews. And today we are sipping on, or we are reviewing, first we're reviewing <laughs> Run Sweetheart Run and we are sipping on some Kahlua, some oat milk, and some cream de cacao syrup. And yes, that's the only mixed drink, fancy mixed drink that I know how to make because it tastes like chocolate milk. <laughs> how y'all doing? So, since Abbott Elementary is not back on until what, like next week or something like that or whatever, or the week after next, I wanted to still give y'all some stuff. So I just decided to do like a couple video request requests from y'all. Thank you for requesting movies and shows and things. And so I wanted to honor that. So the first request that I got from last week was Run Sweetheart Run. And I was like, what is that? Mm -hmm. And so like, I was like not doing nothing. So I was sitting in like, it's on Prime, it's on Amazon Prime. And I sat and watched the movie and I was like, oh snap, it's one of them women revenge movies. I know the fuck that's right, bitch, because I like them type of movies. I don't care. No, because women go through too much, especially black women. This is about a biracial woman. Um, but, you know, we're going to call her black for tonight because she's going through black bitch things. And I just feel like, you know, it ain't right what she had to go through. But she, you know, she, she did what she had to do. It's a good movie. Spoiler alert, you know, maybe I'll put you on to some shit because I was put on by one of y'all. So let's get to it. So it's, it starts with this girl named Cherie. And Cherie is like an assistant to one of the lawyers at this firm. And she's in law school. I guess they call them paralegals. Or maybe that's what you get when you don't have your, your license yet. You can get a job as like a paralegal until you get your like board certification to be like a lawyer or something. I think she's just an assistant though because she's just in law school. So anyway, our pre-law. She's in pre-law. So she's an undergrad. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's the vibe. Okay. So she's in pre-law and she's working as a law firm with these white folks. And, you know, she's experiencing, as black women do in, in white spaces, you know, racism, sexism. We start the movie off. She's sitting in the office with, whatchamacallit, from Girlfriends. Um, What's the dude name from Girlfriends? Y'all know who I'm talking about. He's still acting. You know, God bless him. I be seeing him. He was on Abbott Elementary as a school board dude. He's still out there doing his thing. God bless him. And so, you know, he gaslighted her because some dude said something inappropriate to her and she was trying to tell because he's supposed to be HR and he was all like, well, you know, um, no one else heard it. So, you know, these this is kind of like an old boys club, but no one wants to, you know, but we care about diversity here. And, and so he's a coon. <laughs> he's playing the coon character in the show and so she's just sitting there like okay so nothing's going to happen here and he's like reminding her that her boss wrote her a letter of recommendation and he gave her so many accolades in it and you know trying to make her feel a type of way like she shouldn't be telling on some nigga that was saying derogatory shit to her in the workplace like okay girl mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'll be telling y'all you know, because I don't like pushing that narrative that you got to be a boss bitch or whatever. And you got to have your own business to be somebody. No. But the thing is, is like, I see no other escape out of corporate. <laughs> and, you know, b black owned businesses, especially professional black owned businesses, they see a surplus of people trying to work for them in particular because they're black owned, because they think that they're going to have a different experience within a black owned business. And to a certain extent you will, but because there's a surplus, you're less likely to get that job at that black owned business, you know? And so, you know, I don't see any other way out of white supremacy within cor the corporate environment. Um, that doesn't involve you leaving and starting your own 
your own business and doing what you want to do. Now, you can stay in that situation if you want to, you know, but you just gonna have to have really structured boundaries. And some people can stay 40, 50, 60 years at a business and maintain boundaries and shit like it's not exhausting. But for a lot of people, that shit is exhausting to maintain those types of boundaries or hop from job to job and still experience different flavors of racism and sexism and all sorts of shit. So at this point, I still don't see a way in this white man's world to alleviate ourselves as black people of that. I see black women more and more starting their own businesses and they seem happier, stressed out. I'm stressed, you know, but happy stress. It's not like your boss is hovering over your shoulder while you're trying to get your work done and micromanaging you stress. (laughs) You know, you're your boss and the IRS, you just give them money. And when you give them money, they leave you the fuck alone. So... (laughs) I have yet to see the same situation. So I'm just looking at her at this job and I'm just like, I don't know what to tell you, honey. These people will gaslight you and word salad you and confuse you until you sitting there thinking you the problem. So, you know, I don't I set more boundaries. Hopefully if you set a boundary, they won't throw it in your face and find some reason to fire you down the line just because you set that one boundary. I don't know. I can't promise that you won't get fired if you set boundaries. These people this gaslighting and bullshitting and narcissism is in their blood honey like that's a cultural thing with white folks and so i don't know so anyway she got this job and like she goes to hr he giving her the 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 runaround so she's going home and she on the bus and of course she's getting sexually harassed on the bus she's one of those like so when we think of fight flight or freeze you don't have to be just one So she's, she's kind of like running through all three of them throughout this movie. So when she's on the bus and dude trying to like touch her ass and whatever, she's like, first she freezes, you know, she tries to get away. She tries to like move down the bus and whatever and get away. He follows her, of course, because he's a pervert. Um, And so that doesn't work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so she's like okay I'm just gonna be on the phone and because her boss called her and he's trying to make it seem like she fucked up his schedule and schedule him with a client that night when it's his anniversary dinner and she's sitting there like what I didn't schedule you for and so he's telling her that she got to go out with this client instead of him and I'm just like what kind of ethical like why would you unless you're prostitute I know in other countries because like this the shit Korean dramas are made of like you you, like I'm assuming that's a cultural thing or something like they gotta go on dates with clients and you know it's a meeting date or something because I've seen it in Korean dramas and shit like so I'm guessing they do that in other countries so I'm guessing they do that in this country because she just like acted like whatever about it but it could just be that she just didn't know what to say to him but I would I'm not going on some nighttime meeting with some nigga that I don't no just for this job I, i'm not a prostitute nothing wrong with sex workers but i'm not one so why are you assuming because i don't care if you say it's for business it doesn't feel like it's for business to me sir mm, mm. so she's standing there on the phone talking to this to her boss telling her that she gotta go on a date with some strange nigga so she get home after having to deal with the nasty niggas on the bus and all this other stuff. And so she get home and like she taking a shower. She getting ready for the night. She call her homegirl over and her homegirl is going to babysit the baby. Her baby is so cute. I don't know where they found this little girl at, but she looked like a damn Cabbage Patch doll. It was the cutest little baby I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Well, not, you know, there are a lot of cute babies, but this baby just looked like the perfect little angel. And she was just a little chocolate baby with her little cutie, cutie doll all face and curls and it was nice it was nice and so she getting home and like her period start now the period is going to be a theme for the rest of the movie which is bothering me because I'm just like just some white with some white women in the white writing room because this it's these white women that are trying to make this movement of playing with your period blood I saw a post the other day some white woman you uh, basically painted her acrylics with her period blood then she gonna be like i put a lot of layers of top coat on so blood and i don't touch people so i won't spread bloodborne pathogens and i i drink my period blood and i paint with my period blood and da, 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 and i mix my period blood in the food and i have never gotten sick and i'm just like girl i mean it's like saying you play with your shit because it's toxic waste this isn't 
even if it was fresh blood but like the more blood degrades doesn't it get more toxic and bacteria in it and things like that so this isn't even fresh blood this is blood that's been sitting in your fucking uterus over a month that's sliding out now like what's wrong with y'all you know i'm all for it let's normalize talking about periods expressing periods i mean we normalize shitting fart jokes are just like the number one jokes that these niggas be talking about and shit what let's normalize talking about periods having a period being on your period whatever but why we gotta go to this extreme place where we're playing with our period blood you know this one white woman i saw was doing an art installation where she stuffed yarn into her vagina (laughs) And was crocheting the yarn from her vagina into these art installations. And I was just like, ma'am, that's disgusting. Like, if she had a gallery showing, that whole place would smell like her rank-ass vagina. And I just... There are just some things that you keep private. You don't need to be spreading your vagina juices everywhere. Whether it's blood or dish... What is... Oh, oh. let me stop because I'm going to go on a fucking rant about this. I already did, but it's like, I just want to keep going and going because I don't like bodily fluids. Like, unless you my nigga, like, I don't like bodily fluids. Unless you're my child and I have to, then I get used to it. But other people, like, don't talk and spit on me. Like, I'm done after that. I'm just thinking about the droplet that landed on my face, where it landed, how I'm going to, like, grab some kind of sanitizing agent to wipe that off my face when you're... I've already exited and disassociated from the conversation once that droplet has landed on my face and (laughs) i don't know what you're talking about i'm just nodding and smiling waiting for you to stop so that i can get the fuck away from you (laughs) so anyways her period starts baby throws her last tampon down the toilet i she had a full thing of them light day tampons they may not have done much but i would have grabbed a handful of them motherfuckers and just Ooh, keep going you might be able to stick like if you stick them side by side I, I think there's a possibility that you could stick two of them light days side by side up into your vagina and then i don't know i'm just imagine i've never done that before but i'm imagining something could have been done about this but it wasn't for the whole movie and, and every time she got to take a shower i applauded every time she got a tampon i applauded i was like, yes but it never lasted it never lasted so anyways she is getting ready for a date is on her period daughter throws the tampon down the toilet i don't know if she walks out the house without one on or if she put the light day i'm assuming she put the light day one on because they never showed what she did or at least i didn't see but like she goes on this date with her shit leaking and shit and like (laughs) she ain't about this nigga house he in downtown LA in some mansion and shit like he's some white dude with you know blue eye blonde hair and you know whatever and you know he seems white <laughs> like off top the whole situation would be like sketchy to me so I'm not looking at him off top I wasn't looking at him as if he's a normal person I was already suspicious as soon as I first saw this movie it's like what is hmm hmm he seems nice but a lot of people seem, especially niggas, especially white niggas. So she goes in his house, they talking. I don't forgot what they was talking about. They chit chatting, fair weather talking, all this other shit. And she looked down and she bleeding. Her period is leaked through her shit. And I'm just like, okay, girl. So she go in the bathroom and she stuffs some, you know, some tissues up into her vagina and or not in her vagina i've done that before you know you run out of shit and you ain't got nothing and it's leaking and it's everywhere and you just gotta put some tissue you take the tissue or even the na- I, I usually use the napkins in the bathroom because they're thicker you take the shit and you wrap it around your panty drawers and you take you do a few layers and then that should last you long that's just to last you long enough to get to the toy the the shower to a new tampon to a new pad no she did this shit this shit was supposed to last her through the date (laughs) i'm just like okay girl and not y'all went roller skating you couldn't at least one time ask like hey can we stop at the liquor store real quick i need to get me like one of them one or two three pack tampon situations no instead like she's i'm thinking she's skating through the night on some tissue in her in her panties (laughs) and so they they go into dinner and everything seemed fine at first then a dog comes up this woman 
this couple is walking out the restaurant and they got a dog and the dog just freak out and start barking at this nigga and this nigga jump and be like oh you need to control your fucking dog so i understand that he was scared okay and for me because he was scared i would have kind of been on the fence about the aggression but i wouldn't have went in the house with him after the date because of that that would have been enough for me not to go in the house but i may have considered a second date depending on you know but he turned out to be like guys mm, uh, let's get into it bro so so he's sitting now talking about i'm sorry i'm sorry and then i i said it before he said it. i was like what lie he gonna make up and i was like he he gonna probably say some shit like i got bit by a dog when i was five and uh, i just i'm afraid deathly afraid of dogs and da, 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 da. and i was like and that's exactly what he said pretty much he got bit by a dog and now he's scared of dogs and it scared him and he got aggressive and jumped up and said get your fucking dog and i'm just like okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so they didn't go roller skating to make the night a little bit more cutesy and lighten up the situation from the restaurant and all the other shit then they get back to his house and she's wavering on whether or not to go in because this was just supposed to be a meeting she's back and forth in it because she got to go um relieve the babysitter at her house i wonder if he would have let her go if she had left i don't know like is that a part of the deal like if she just leaves and doesn't go back into his house does that in his mind mean she's not a whore so like she doesn't deserve to be murdered or like <laughs> or would he just been like no she's still a whore she's just a whore that wants to fuck later <laughs> so i'm gonna kill her anyways i don't know but like she was wavering for a second but then i guess he had a sad face or whatever so she goes in the house with this nigga and then all you hear like you, they close and he's breaking the fourth wall when he gets to the door and is about to close it. he's breaking the fourth wall looking at the camera looking all evil and shit and i was like i knew you was evil it's called run sweetheart run, run. like it's we knew you was evil <laughs> you gotta look at the camera and so he's going out and close the door and, and we don't see what he does to her but all we hear is the screaming and and things being thrown and damages so she runs out that motherfucker house and starts running down the street and then she runs to this neighbor house and this one right white woman is just like in her little mansion situation just looking out the window at her like and then she just turned the light off and i'm just like as i watch this movie i just feel like okay so everybody is connected this is like some weird ass los angeles nighttime people type shit and everybody know about this nigga in the nighttime people that she run into and so she i think that lady knew about this nigga because she lived in the same neighborhood so i think that's why she ignored her i mean it could have been racism too most likely but the way everybody else was acting i think i think that she was a part of it too like she knew this nigga was down the street you know uh eating people and destroying lives and stuff she didn't give a fuck mm-hmm. he probably give her money and do stuff for her too you know what i mean these white people just like giving him bodies and he, he eat them kill the bodies and then he get they get money or some shit i don't fucking know mm-hmm mm-hmm some like white people cult shit and devil tree and all this other demon worshiping and shit and so she running and she running she get to this theater and she run to these two white bitches and she be like hey i need help say uh this dude attacked me and she looking all bedraggled and her uh, her shit is fucked up on her face her makeup fucked up she looking like she been attacked and shit and they looking at her like she a crackhead y'all and i'm just like she don't she ain't acting like she on drugs she's just she's she's a little bit hysterical because she's saying that she's experiencing assault but she's not acting as if she's on drugs she's not acting as if she's inebriated she's literally clearly stating i have just been assaulted by this guy that i was on a date with and i need to use your phone and they're looking at her like well i'll call the number for you what's your babysitter's number and she's like i don't have my cell phone it's he took it from me and i don't know her who the fuck knows people's numbers nowadays i mean maybe we should be memorizing people's numbers still because you know like shit like this could happen god forbid don't never let this shit happen keep these motherfucking sociopathic narcissistic motherfuckers away from me jesus Mm. <laughs> and so they looking at her like something wrong with her so racism you know and like how hard it is to like be black and be a woman in the world <laughs> So they go call the police for her because she don't know her babysitter number. And the police come and of course they think she on drugs or some shit wrong with her. So they put her in the backseat of the car. 
I take her to the police station. She's clearly talking, clearly stating how she feels. She left her address of her babysitter, you know, at the front desk to see if she's in the system so that they can call her and let them know and stuff. And they just, this dude, this white dude just looking at her like she crazy. Lo and behold, this white dude is a part of it. So it's like a, a, a double play. So basically what's happening in this movie is that feeling you feel when you've been discriminated against and you try to get help. And the people you try to get help from are looking down on you and making you feel bad for getting help. So it feels like they're all in on it. Like all these people are in on it. They don't want to help me. Like, let's say it's at work. And like, like in the beginning, somebody said something derogatory to her. She went to HR. HR just defending a derogatory person. So it just feels like they're all in it and they're all against you. And it's hard not to feel that way as a person of color or another, you know, um, I don't like saying minority because people of color are the majority in the world. But, you know, you're, you're another disadvantaged person when it comes to white people. <laughs> And so, you know, like, sh like when you, when you live that type of life, when shit happens to you and you try to get help, since there's so, since white people tend to be the ones that are the police officers, then you got the white adjacents, the people that are, you know, stuck to the whites and want to live in that white supremacy for their own protection. Like HR nigga in the beginning, you want to live in white supremacy because it protects you from racism that you think, but they're still microaggressing and treating you like you're less than when you hang out with them. You just sit, sit there and take it like some pathetic bitch, but you know, do you, but when it affects other people that don't want to do that, that's when it becomes a problem. And so it's kind of that, you know, and then on, and then, on the other side, the flip side, it's like these people actually know and are connected to this weird nigga. And so everybody, is not everybody, but everybody that she goes to help for that's in some kind of system or is white, you know, they're against her. So she gets to the prison. She's in the prison. There's this other woman in there. She may be a sex worker or something. And this other woman is asking her, like, what happened? So she's telling her story. And they get to the, the story of he gave her gin when he was at the house. And it was nasty gin or something. It was, like, watered down or something. I don't know. And the woman just freezes. She's just like, he gave you nasty gin? And then she told her she wanted to get out the cell away from her. And she's just like, what's going on? Why are you scared of me? And she's like, my friend met some dude that gave her nasty gin. And then they found her the next morning on the steps of the Getty dead and shit. And, they, and she was just like, oh, mm. Mm -hmm. so she's sitting there in a jail cell period blood just pulling on the floor i'm just like my dear lord i mean she asked the officer for a tampon but i'm just like my dear lord and don't get me wrong you know i know there are situations where people are living a certain type of life because of white supremacy and society and poverty and can't have access to certain things and so these things happen but this is not that type of movie. <laughs> she has access to things. Okay. Like this is not this. You are, you are highlighting her period blood for a reason. And it's gross. There could have been other ways that she could have bled where it wasn't toxic waste coming out of her vagina. That's all I'm saying. But there's period blood pulling on the floor. She's in the cell by herself. She doesn't know what to do. And, the officer comes and says she has a visitor. She's like, I don't want no fucking visitor. What are you talking about? And this nigga, this white nigga walks in talking about, thank you, Michael. And I'm just like, Michael, mm, sir. So you as a police officer are involved with this white nigga that is raping and pillaging and murdering women. He's doing that. He's like a serial killer situation. So I was just like, so at first I was confused. So I feel like in this movie, they didn't explain enough. And it was just kind of like, all of a sudden they were magical. All of a sudden this nigga is a demon. All of a sudden this, this, this and it's just like, what, I, because, because I'm a learned woman. <laughs> and I watch documentaries about religions and watch a lot of movies and shit like that. I, and I watch, I, I watch animes and stuff too. So what I felt like they were doing was he was like the in incel de demon. Like he's the incel MGTOW red pill demon. And in certain religions and in certain animes, the stuff that you pour, the material things that you pour your energy into, 
Like if people do it in mass, like in a worshiping type of way, it can, the energy of that can create like demons and shit with that certain thing. Like there is this one like K drama I watched where like, it wasn't a K drama. What was, oh, it was, um, what was it? I forgot that show. But yeah, basically there was a bunch of like demons and they were like the television demon and the, the money demon and all this other shit. So I'm thinking that's what this is because they never really say what kind of like demon he is. They just say that he, well, no, they do, but they don't like give him like a name, like the, the incel demon. I just gave him that name because that's what he is. He's the incel demon. <laughs> so shut up. So he come in there and he he's he's made up some weird ass illusion about her talking about oh you came in there with that skimpy ass dress are we not supposed to it was supposed to be a meeting date was was she supposed to wear a business suit because like I'm confused what was she supposed to what was she supposed to wear like was she supposed to come in there with sweats and a sweatshirt like like was she not supposed to want to be attractive on the date or feel cute for herself just because no she came in there because obviously she wanted to fuck you with her fu in her fuck me dress right mm -hmm. just delusional just making shit up about her intentions and who she is as a person based off of his own life experiences and stuff you know nigga shit <laughs> and so he's like this is a game and i'm gonna chase you and if you make it till morning then you get to be free and i'm just like okay nigga and so she runs out to jail and then she runs to like where she run to oh she runs and catches a taxi and for whatever reason this taxi doesn't it's cool with her not paying money but then he starts talking about how he's met other girls like her running away so it's all in kind of the same area she didn't run that far from his house so i'm thinking people in this area know who this this nigga is and know the girls that have disappeared from him and they not doing shit because he's a demon <laughs> like no like it ain't because he white and he got money no he's a real life demon like you can't kill this nigga like you can't do a damn thing so she gets in a taxi taxi is taking her to her boss's house and he's giving her the advice on how to stay alive for the night because apparently he's been driving these bitches around and stuff for to try to help them and shit and so she gets to her boss house she thinks her boss is gonna help her she thinks this is all a mistake and this nigga just turned out to be crazy and her boss didn't know and blah blah, blah. remember crazy means that you indiscriminately harm people with no remorse or no regret nigga's crazy so anyways she is her boss house and her boss is just like oh dear sweetheart let me you know comfort and protect you and then he want to call this nigga and ask him what was going on. she's like no don't call him that was the first red flag i mean like just the extra cheesy dear sweetheart shit in the beginning was making me side eye why is he talking like she was this little child <laughs> but I, I was gonna let it go until he wanted to call this nigga why do you want to call this and then the wife came in the room acting weird and shit because he kept asking her to make tea asking her over and over and over again to make tea and i was just like why are you mm. it was just weird weird energy so she over there making tea taking her time looking at the girl weird and then the girl and then the husband say she could stay there for the night and then the wife is like chopping shit hella hard and stuff because she don't want this bitch staying there because this nigga was gonna come to that house and he, <laughs> she stay there so she like oh hell no so the bitch go and she takes another shower it was magical it was so magical when she took that shower i was she was dirty there was period blood everywhere it was all the things and then wife gives her this old 1960s nightgown to wear and i was just like where are the pants where are the sweatshirt where are the things that she needs to wear to run why are you giving her this 1960s you know what fuck it so she is in the study where the shower is and she's on her boss's computer and she sees her name on his calendar and she goes oh and it's her name sheree and tithe and she's like why does it say tithe so she searches on the computer for more tithes and there is a tithe for every month of the year because these white people are sacrificing these young women to this demon person for whatever monetary value or whatever they get from him and so she's freaking out. The wife comes in, sees her on the computer. She slams it shut. And then the wife tries to warn her. She's like, he can smell your blood. So keep clean so he doesn't smell you. And I'm just like, is this why the period blood? Because she has gashes and wounds from where he hit her all over. I'm just like, 
why couldn't we just have the gashes in the wound? Why we got to be running around with period blood leaking down our legs and stuff? And I was just like, because she was running around for a cool minute without a tampon and no stains. And But when she finally went to a liquor store to get like some tampons, she gonna ask for a super. And I'm just like, I'm confused. So she runs out the house when she sees all this. When the boss walks in the room, she runs out the house because the wife had given her a tampon, but she, because you know the situation had changed, she was trying to get up out of there. She was thinking about no motherfucking tampon. So she runs out the house and uh, like runs into the bus, and this black woman is driving the bus. Thank you, Jesus, for black woman. Gives her her cell phone. She calls her baby daddy, and it's her ex, and he like fucked her best friend after they broke up so she ain't been talking to her best friend or her ex like that really except the co-parent and so she didn't want to call this nigga but she called this nigga and then like she was gonna have him pick her up from this liquor store so she stops this liquor store she had her mom's uh watch on all day that's what she wore to the date so she didn't have no money because this nigga took her purse and her cell phone so she you know exchanged her mother's watch it was so sad that was her mom's watch but anyways to get a box of tampons so she goes in a little nasty like liquor store oh excuse me bathroom out back she keep hearing noises outside but like no one's trying to come in so she put her tampon on she get out this nigga standing by the door he tackled this bitch and of course he like does the fourth wall thing again and like turns the camera away before he starts beating her ass and there's this like homeless woman sitting over there like just rocking back and forth because you know she's seen shit she been through shit and she just she just rocking back and forth and i was like i know girl god bless her you mm. and so like the whatchamacallit manager comes back comes outside because he sees him hitting on her and this nigga like has a shotgun he's like you stop hitting her and he just looks at this nigga like mind your business and the nigga is like what and i guess he can see that there's something off with this nigga like he's a demon or some shit so he goes back inside and then she sees that she got a clear way so she runs and her baby daddy shows up she gets in his car <sighs> this nigga is the most irritating nigga and i'm not even putting this on niggas in general because niggas ain't even this clueless in real life like the bitch running up to you and some grandmammy nightgown, giant gash in her forehead, blood everywhere. And you just going to look at her chuckle and be like, what you, what happened to you? <laughs> you get in a fight? I'm, nigga, this bitch look like she just got kidnapped and, 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 and horrible things done to her. And she stole the kidnapper's clothes and left. Like, why are you not why are you just sitting here and then like he keep asking stupid ass like now i can see why he would be confused as to because she wouldn't tell him what was going on for a minute but he's still asking the wrong questions it was a lot of like trying to tell her what to do and trying to make her feel bad because he fucked her friend and all this other stuff and she's just sitting there like traumatized keep looking back like trying to make sure this nigga ain't coming in this thing ain't talking about shit and i'm just looking at this thing like what's wrong with you like what's wrong with you this ain't even a nigga thing this is a you thing sir what is wrong with you what is wrong and then finally like he runs over some shit and so he get out he's trying to get out the car she's like don't get out the car don't get out the car and he's like what are you talking about i need to get out the car so he gets out the car to go look and this nigga could have got killed but whatever he got out the car to go look and it wasn't nothing so he comes back to the door just standing at the door and she's like well get back in the car let's go he's like i'm not getting back into the car so you tell me what's going on and i'm just like why don't you get back in the car what what why why is it so hard for you to be you dunce ass <laughs> oh he was irritating the dog shit out of me i would have hopped in the driver's seat and stole his shit i don't care but that's her baby daddy so whatever girl so uh, she like tells him what happened and he don't get in the car and be like tell me where he lives nigga you ain't gonna do nothing you're not he's a he's gonna he's mm. so you wasn't asking this when you first saw her get in the car looking like somebody kidnapped her and and did horrible things to her and she stole their clothes and left like you wasn't gonna ask her like you you wasn't trying to find out nothing in like that like you was running at the mouth running at the gums about stupid shit but now that she tell you what happened now you want to listen i'm tired i'm tired so they take her he takes her to his house and his girl is there which is her best friend 
and the best friend see her and she like at first she was talking shit before she saw her and she saw her and she had the appropriate response because she seen what was going on and she said i'm gonna take care of you bump this nigga nah like what happened so she take her in the house she go upstairs take another shower yes god so many showers so many showers this evening you know and it's magical and so she takes a shower <laughs> puts on another tampon vibes and <laughs> i don't care every time she takes a shower and puts a tampon on an angel gets its wink and so she takes a shower puts a tampon, and she asks a little cousin to like do her tarot reading and she got like these cards that basically like she got the tower card and the death card and the night card and all this other shit basically that's like transition and change and warrior and all this other shit and so like but she freaking out because she thinks she gonna die or some shit tonight she got a whole baby that's understandable and so she upstairs and this nigga this white nigga gonna come to the door baby daddy had went to go get her some more tampons and so she upstairs and like this nigga comes to the house and everybody in there got a gun, a knife, a, a weapon, all the shit. And so I'm thinking they about to kill this nigga. This is before I realized that he was some other shit. Okay. <laughs> I was just like, why? why, why is she so scared of this nigga getting shot by these people? Like, you know, like let them kill him. And so she takes the little cousin upstairs and hide in the bathroom. And all you hear is this rumbling now. I rub up screaming and yelling and da, da, da. So she go downstairs and things get quiet. This nigga is in the middle of the living room. Everybody around him is dead. I'm just like, you showed up and there were guns and knives and one nigga had a machete. How? <laughs> so at this point I realized that this nigga is not a human. <laughs> like he's not human that's what's happening and so he makes her like she's frozen like disassociated and stuff so he pulls her over to her and they just dance into the music baby daddy come to the house see them through the window like what and they coming outside on the porch and baby daddy just like so what's this and she just like standing there like scared as fuck like don't say nothing like she's just telling him don't say nothing and this nigga mm, i'm not saying he deserved to die i'm just saying like <laughs> this dunce ass nigga <laughs> irritated shit. he gonna go so is this a nigga that hurt he couldn't even finish the sentence where this nigga went and ripped his fucking head off and bit through his neck like a fucking wolverine and shit nigga i was like oh so he's not human he's some other sh other shit because i still didn't believe it until he ripped that nigga's head off with his bare hands and i was just like what the fuck is this nigga so she runs out the house runs to the back gets to like where does she go she gets to like this church she runs to this church and like in the church is this is this uh what's priest and he in there like you know she's trying to ask him for help trying to ask for holy water trying to figure out like you know you think shit that kill a demon and this thing is just calm asking her like to confess her sins i'm just like what the fuck is wrong with this don't she don't he hear her don't he see that she's and so she feel blood like coming down from her hand i guess is bleeding so as soon as she start bleeding again this nigga coming and so she's like oh he's coming and then all the candles in the church went out and then this nigga then she turned around and started backing up and then she looked down and the actual priest is on the floor and knock, knocked out i thought he was dead but he was just knocked out and then she look up and it's this nigga this nigga's a shapeshifter transformer so she throwing holy water in his face he gonna act like it don't it, like it bothers him but really it didn't and he tried to he like come up on her in her face and uh, like is about to like hit her again do some stuff to her but then the priest get up and like stab him in the neck and some shit and so she runs into this little grate in the church into the underground basement situation i don't know how that turned into a fucking underground club situation but it did like i was just like they had that in la like okay well you know i mm. I didn't know. That looked like some New York shit. So she ended up in this little underground club in this danky ass little bathroom. So she's realizing that she got to cover up her blood scent. So she thinking that the, the faucet don't work. The bathroom is dirty. It's disgusting. She sees some Clorox bleach wipes. And I was just like, girl. She takes the Clorox bleach wipes and rubs the blood off of every wound. It burns, of course. Then she takes the Clorox bleach wipe and rubs it on her vagina. And I was just like i mean you gotta do what you gotta do when a demon is after you and you ain't got no tampons but nigga 
And then she steals this girl's jacket because she in there fucking some dude in a stall and like threw her jacket on the top. And then she walk out. Then she steal this bitch purse from the coat room and take her cell phone and, and it's calling. So throughout the movie, she's seeing this like these missing posters with the number to call on them. And the number is for this woman called the first lady. The prostitute in the prison told her about the first lady, but she, I don't think it registered for her at that point. She was just trying to get away from this nigga. So she'd been seeing the first lady. So she ripped the number off the wall and called the first lady. The first lady told her to come to the Korean spa downtown. And so she getting up to go and these niggas gonna surround her because he's a Marine or Army such a situation. And she got on some doctored up Army jacket or some shit. And he mad because she got on some doctored up Army jacket. You need to be mad at the government that makes you go to war for shit that don't matter. <laughs> go to war to, tell, to t steal people's land and go to war to steal people's oil and go to war to 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 puppet to govern these puppet governments and shit and make sure that they doing everything in the best interest of america and not for their actual own countries you need to be mad about that but no you're mad at this one girl that's over here in a doctored up army jacket just you know we're not paying attention to what's important sir but whatever god bless um so these white bitches come up and they like save her like get her away from these dudes and get her in the car and she's like okay cool i need to go to the downtown uh korean spa and da 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 so she go mm -hmm. she goes to the korean sp oh no 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 she in the car and they talking they tell her what time dawn is and she realized that dawn is the same time as it was on that dude's phone because before she was going to go in the house with him after the date she was saying that her daughter wakes up at 6 30 so she needs to be home when she wakes up and uh, he was like okay well i'll set my alarm for 6 30 and then that way you can you know and she's noticed is that he also has alarm for 5 25 he's trying to play it off me like oh that was an accident no it wasn't nigga shut up and so <laughs> she the girls are telling her about some some magical thing that's supposed to happen in the morning when the, when the sun come up at 5 25 and they wait for it or whatever the fuck and she realized like oh this is when dawn is and he had to count down from jump and he was gonna do this yes girl <laughs> and then all of a sudden her head start bleeding again and the girl in the front is like oh girl are you okay your head's bleeding and then the car just flips over because <laughs> this nigga found her because she bleeding again so the car flip over every bitch in the car died except for her he dragged her out the car and is about to death stomp her when this pit bull comes up and start barking at him so something with dogs i'm just like why couldn't it be cats i mean if we gonna do it's women and why are we not gonna do cats <laughs> you know? so she like um what, what you call it she um she like uses the dog the dog is barking at him and stuff i think the the first lady sent the dog or some shit because when they get when she gets she walks with the dog and when she gets to the spa the dog just sits outside the spa just sitting there sentinel we get into the spa i'm just like yes healing cleansing waters <laughs> I'm just healing cleansing waters i kept saying i was i just was so excited for her to bathe again <laughs> so excited for her to bathe I think that was the most excited I was the thing I, I don't think that was the most the thing I was most excited about with this movie was for her to have a fucking bath and to get something to plug that shit up I don't care <laughs> so the first lady telling her their origin story and how she's the first angel and this other nigga is some fallen demon the corrupt angel and he's the incel angel and he just is in control and he's the one that's been influencing men to like take control of the world and destroy everything and now is the time of the woman and da, 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 da. i'm just like okay girl so is she gonna get a bath <laughs> So like she don't and she wants to use this girl as bait because the nigga's after her. Girl don't want to do it. But then she was like, no, this nigga's gonna go after your child and is gonna kill like he she he's killed whole matriarchs and the matriarchal lines and all this other shit. So she was like, damn it, oh gosh. Mm. I guess cause I have a child or whatever. I was like, I know, girl. I would have been the same too, I guess, because I have a child or whatever. <laughs> so they clean her up scrub her up get all the blood off and give her bandages and it was magical <laughs> most magical part of the fucking movie <laughs> clean this bitch up it's so like <laughs> she and the, the 
the the first lady's like Corvette situation, sports car situation or whatever. And she driving to meet this nigga at the docks. I think they was meeting at like Santa Monica Pier or some shit at the Ferris wheel or some shit. So she meet him at the Ferris wheel and she like start cutting open her cut so that she can call him to her and i'm just like that's enough blood he should smell that eventually and come but no then she want to reach in her fucking pants <laughs> i don't understand why this is necessary she had like two cuts on her knees two cuts on the elbow cut on the forehead and she was ripping at all of them and that was enough blood i don't know why the period blood because it was like she take the tampon out and then she squeezes it on the floor and i'm just like that wasn't even the same amount of blood that came out your forehead and your elbows and your knees like there was more blood in your forehead and your elbows and your knees than in your tampon like I'm, I'm white women were in the writing room that's all i'm gonna say there's probably a white woman director that's all i'm gonna say because no those are the ones that like to play with their period blood those are the ones that think it's okay to do that <laughs> okay so anyways, mm, I said what I said. Anyway, <laughs> this nigga come and he throwing her all over the place and blah, blah. But they has this grand plan to drag it out until dawn, right? So she tricked this nigga. You can trick a nigga by just acting like you want to give him what he wants. So she was like, I want you. I want to give you what you want. Because all this shit, all this bluster is abandonment issues and depression and anxiety and all the other stuff that they're masking with anger and resentment and aggression. That's all that shit is. And so she tapped into his abandonment issues by basically telling him what he wanted to hear, which is, I want to stay with you and be with you and love on you and do the things. I'm never, I'm not going to run anymore. So he unties her and is laying on top of her. I don't know if he's going to like fuck her to death or whatever the fuck he's going to do. She takes this charcoal rock and tries to bang him in the forehead and shit. That doesn't work. Then she throws the rock and the light comes in and starts to burn his ass. And she was like, he was like, is that all you got? Da -da. And then the other bitches come and break all the windows and shit. I guess that one rock was a signal and this nigga started like melting into black shit <laughs> he's just crawling away and then we skipped to their outside and this nigga done crawled outside and she done moved the camera now she using the fourth wall she moved the camera over to where he had he done crawled outside and the first lady come and she kills this nigga like and i'm guessing that the rich white folks no longer have this particular demon to siphon material um, items from but i'm sure they have other demons that they utilize and stuff like that you know back your back your your regular old backup demons and things um so like that's it like she killed this nigga the first lady kills her and then she walks home and i guess you know like maybe they give her a ride home because she was in santa monica like i don't know how close her home is to that but like yes so she goes home and you know picks up her baby with her period blood hands and you know that's her baby that's none of my business <laughs> what like you picking up your child with the period blood like you know like you was just missing your she was just caught up in her emotions this is probably not like a normal thing she would do i'm sure because she's black <laughs> and then she sits on the floor she's all traumatized and shit from from all of that you know and it's just like you know womanhood and shit like magicalness and shit and i was like okay this was a decent ass fucking movie like, i mean that could have been a little bit more like like leeway like it leading into like the demon situation or something that like that just randomly popping up and oh he's a demon like on top of everything like there was no magic in this movie all the way up until the part where he rips this nigga's head off with his bare fucking hands and teeth. <laughs> so it's just very confused. <laughs> there was no, it was very confusing. Like, <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, that's why the niggas in the house with the machetes and the shotguns and the things couldn't kill this. <laughs> so i was just like okay and they kept them that's why they kept talking about blood and he can smell her blood i was just like what do you mean he's just a person why would he be able to smell her blood like that? <laughs> you know he's a sociopath narcissist all the things sociopathic narcissist you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sociopathic narcissists like the notoriety and fame but at the same time they're very you know murdery and 
still want to commit these severe crimes and they want to get the notoriety and fame from the crimes. Whereas like narcissists, regular narcissists, they just get notoriety like from abuse and manipulation. You know, not they don't tend to like be murderers. <laughs> shit just off top but sociopathic narcissists they want attention from like doing crimes and hurting people and committing fraud and stuff like that so he's a sociopathic narcissist demon situation i'm just like okay so yeah but whoever suggested this movie it's a good ass movie I hope other people watch this movie, you know, because it's nice to see, especially a black woman, you know, she biracial, but whatever. I looked her up. Her mama black. So she ain't raised by a white mom because usually the biracial is raised by white moms that tend to have those issues. So I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt because, you know, she she did good in this movie. This is a good movie. Like, I liked it. Like, you know, niggas might not like this because they probably going to be like, it's too preachy and woke and feminist and da da da. Like, this shit don't happen in real life to women on a regular especially black women on a regular basis <laughs> that's why it only has like three stars on Pro amazon prime and i just be like skipping over shit with three stars because i've had too many bad experiences of trying to watch movies because i want to be like oh you know give it a chance and they always end up just as bad as the stars said they were <laughs> but no i think it has three stars because niggas don't want to see <laughs> women get one up on them <laughs> get one over on them and shit like that's all i gotta say like the only thing i didn't like about the movie was just the you know it is listed as a horror not a thriller like a psychological thriller would be like a regular ass dude human killing people so i should that should that should alerted me but still like don't just introduce magic randomly <laughs> like that that's confusing not everybody knows that like people can like worship things so much that they could create a demon around the thing and stuff like that or that religions and certain animes and certain shows do that not that not that many people know that so you can't just randomly introduce some d nigga and he he seems like a regular human being that just happens to kill people and this nigga turned out to be a demon like randomly <laughs> with no build-up like so that was the only thing i had that was a problem for me but otherwise like it was it's not it's not gonna make me not watch the movie though so i hope you enjoy i'll probably do one more video this week somebody requested um players club not players club i already did players club how to be a player because i already did um what you call it two can play that game so like at some point this week i'm gonna do how to be how to be a player because bill bellamy like mm -hmm. <laughs> When he showed up at that party and all them bitches was there. <laughs> and he was trying to dodge all them. <laughs> I was just like, well, that's what happens, sir. When you got like, when you're lying and you're, 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 you're despicable and things. <laughs> so that's probably gonna be the next one. But like, let me know what you think it is. Like, I don't usually do like movies that aren't like, like, like hyped up and stuff that not a lot of people know but like maybe i should start doing more of that maybe like put some people on and shit some shit that i like to watch and shit you know but yeah it's called run sweetheart run it is what one hour and 40 some minutes 44 minutes it is on amazon prime and it's a good watch like you know if you're a woman and you've been through shit and you tired of going through shit and you just want to see some other women like deal with the shit and you know Yes, somewhat a violent way, but you know, you know, you can't do that in real life. So why not watch it on a movie? Like, it's like that other movie with that white woman. What's that? What's it called? I'm gonna put a little thing here, but like she was going around like pretending to be drunk and shit at at the club and seeing if niggas would date try to date rape her. And then when they tried, she would like murder them and shit. But if they didn't try, she would leave them alone and shit. Like Eileen Warnos, but you know, some of them niggas probably wasn't trying to rape her though. <laughs> I'm not saying she wasn't right. I'm just saying some of them niggas might not have been trying to rape her and she like killed them anyway. So <laughs> but, Oh God. I mean it's not right. Like I don't want nobody out here to think it's okay to harm people. But like just like niggas like to play Call of Duty and watch action movies to let off some steam. These women revenge movies help me let off steam because sometimes it's just be so hard walking through life as a black woman and not knowing how to live and how to be around these men. And just to watch some shit that's just chaotic. That's cause that's how you be feeling sometimes. Just chaotic. 
and pent up and tired and it does feel like everybody's in on it and you're crazy and you're being gaslit especially if it's in the workplace or in a friend group and you one of the few people of color in a friend group and things like that it's just like you feel like everybody's in on it everybody's against you every and 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 you don't know what to do and so to have these types of outlets for specifically black women in particular i mean women in general experience it but i think we need to have movies like this for every race because we all experience it in different ways like these men were treating her a certain way because she was specifically a black woman like if she was a white woman it would be similar things but it would just be a a, it would just be a different it would be a little bit different I can't explain it but it just is it's not better it's just different you know because it's like if she was a white woman that had went up to those other white women and said she was assaulted, those white women would have helped her and gave her the phone to call somebody to help her. But because she was black, no, she's a crackhead. <laughs> I'm not getting this crackhead my phone. <laughs> That's what I mean. So it's different. So every, I think every culture should have, like I was watching this one Indian movie and it was like this supernatural movie where this woman was in this this palace and she was like the fodder to the men and the, the like she was fodder to the men at the palace and stuff and i don't know what happened i think her husband was gone for a long time and she got with this other dude and then her husband found out and tried to kill her and she turned into this demon and killed everybody i was like vibes <laughs> i was like vibes and they sit up and play call of duty for 14 hours i could sit up and watch this shit, this shit and release release it's a release <laughs> So I can go back outside and face these niggas. I don't want to harm anybody. I don't want to do anything to anybody. I just want to be able to live life in the world and be unbothered. And so these help these types of movies help me to live life in the world and be unbothered because then I can just disassociate when these niggas try to bother me and not, you know, and if they touch me, then, you know, just don't touch me. <laughs> That's all I'm going to Just don't touch me. <laughs> But anyways, let me know if you've seen this movie or if this inspires you to see it and let me know what you think about it. And yeah, later days.